But what is Rashad getting at here? I think one player is going to win, or the other player is going to cast counter. Okay, I'll see what happens. All right, well, we will find out exactly what is so awesome. <laughs> Wait, is there other cards in the sideboard we're missing? <laughs> All right, I don't get it. Okay, uh, uh, so l welcome to the round three feature match here at the Star City Games Open Series, uh, the legacy portion uh, in, in Edison, New Jersey. I'm Gavin Verhe Verhey, joined here by my uh, guest host, Ben Hayes, who's going to be commentating with us for a little while. On your right, James Reich Reich Rinkowitz. James Rinkowitz, uh, currently 2 0 with a Bant counterbalance deck. Looks like he has like counterbalances, a Green Sun Zenith. Swords, Force of Will, Pride Mage, Brainstorm, Noble Hierarch, and of course Natural Order into Progenitus. On the other end <laughs> is, <laughs> is, is, is AJ Kerrigan, uh, 12, probably 12 years old, no, and, nine. and he is playing, and he is playing a very complicated Storm combo deck. Um, and he's playing uh, a very typical, it's got Lotus Petal, Orem's Chance, uh, some Silences, you know, all the normal things. Rite of Flame, Brainstorm, Duress, <laughs> Infernal Tutor, uh, Dark Ritual, Burning Wish, Lion's Eye Diamond, Chromox, Ad Nauseam. Uh, but I heard rumors about this kid yesterday, uh, and he's apparently really good. I, a bunch of people lost to him that I was talking yeah, to. Yeah, he's supposed to be a sicko. I heard he was like playing at a local tournament and he was just crushing everyone with the storm deck. Yeah. And like doing really complicated math. That's really impressive in my math, book. Math way beyond what he's learning in school probably. <laughs> a good old magic. <laughs> wow, so I'm excited to see uh, see how this turns out. Is a Yeah, I mean the matchup looks kind of typical, but uh, the players are uh, certainly not. So on the left, uh, we have Polluted Delta by uh, AJ Kerrigan and Tropical Island by James. And a Gemstone Mine continues to set up his combo. You saw it, right? You saw it, right? You saw it. Oh, we'll go pen. <laughs> and so he. Uh, Let's see, so he cracks his Polluted Delta. Oh my I, gosh, this I, is I, like a big Medeckus in relation to him. This is I think, it, I actually, like, this reminds me of when I started playing Magic. I think it's really cool that he's playing. Like, you can actually learn so much from Magic. Like, there's a lot of really great intuitive skills and, like, um, that you can learn from playing the game. And I think it's great that a player like this is playing in this tournament. He just has no fear coming in here. I heard he did well yesterday. I've heard this kid's name before, and I've... Uh, seen people talking about, oh, I lost to, you know, like, some kid or whatever, and this is the kid that keeps racking up all the wins. I wouldn't be surprised if we see him uh, doing pretty well at this tournament. Man, uh, I want this kid to win. Yes. That'd be so cool. So we, Get uh, out of here, James. <laughs> Look at you. So he, he, Fighting a little kid. So he tutors up Volcanic Island. Somebody called Dyphus, this guy. <laughs> And uh, it's the last thing we need is Billy Marino lookalikes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so all right, looks like uh, we got some action from Kerrigan. Could this be at the end? You might have it right here. All right, looks like he's starting with silence. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's a, that, that is a good one to start with. That's the look of a champion. Uh, and James is like, well, do I counter it? Do I not? <laughs> oh, man. You know, he, he be, wants to say... Would be so sick if he's bluffing and he doesn't have the combo. He's, he's just, just trying just to get a force, a force out. Like, yeah. I hope that's what's happening. <sighs> Lotus Petal. Did Silence resolve? Silence resolved. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right. So uh, this might be it right here. Let's see. This might be it. Dark Ritual. Seamus might want to say an expletive right now, but it's not really appropriate because of the age of his opponent. So, uh, all right, so that's three spells so far this turn, and black, black, black in his mana pool. There's LED. Uh, do we have Infernal Tutor. Let's see, so that's four spells. Uh, there's Burning Wish. She's going to crack the LED in response. So that's spell number five for the turn, and he currently has... 
three. He currently has five mana floating. Writing down his mana. Yep. So he has five spells and five mana floating. I wasn't writing down my mana at that age, but I was playing magic. He pulls out uh, his deck box. <laughs> Do we know how old he is? I think this is awesome. Maybe he's like 65 and he just has the disorder that Benjamin Button has. <laughs> you know, like. Right. <laughs> and so he gets uh, Empty the Warrens and he's identified his opponent. He led on Tropical Island. He is not afraid of anything. And Empty the Warrens for 12 Goblin Tokens seems to be the course of action here. Yep. So what outs does James have? James I am looking, looking at his list. He could play a War Monk on three. Maybe that'll buy. Yeah, I think War Monk will maybe buy him some time. That race is it? Yeah. Other than that, is this, uh, I think he's got him. No way to sweep those tokens. Is one of those tokens Jerry T? Maybe they're all his older brother. I don't know. All right. So so James is. <laughs> 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 this is priceless. Alright, so here comes Tarmogoyf, which will take down one of those tokens and only drop James to nine. Um, <laughs> let's counter on his opponent's Goyf. Oh, and master. it draws duress to see what James has in his hand. And James might just consider scooping here. He might not want to give away any more information unless he has that War Monk to potentially uh, take over the game. He's not going to work out so well. <laughs> All right, so James decides not to concede and reveals his hand. I mean, you never know. Like, what's. James list here. I mean, I think it has to be Rock's War Monk. Yeah. And not sure that races it, though. I'm going to nine. All right, there's a progenitus in his hand. That kind of sucks. Although you can't always pitch it to force of will. So he took natural order? Uh, yeah. Writes down his hand. If uh, anyone out there on Twitter has a, like plays out a store with this kid, I'd be curious if you have any more information on him because it sounds like really cool. I wonder if he's been playing for a while or, you know, uh, what his uh, what his status in the game is. We don't really know a lot right now. Might, maybe we'll take him in the booth later. It's hard to say. Um, but so, yeah, yeah, and that's the game. James uh, packs it in, and Andrew Kerrigan, AJ Kerrigan, takes. Game one of this matchup. Oh man. And so uh, they go to the sideboards. Uh, who do you think is favorite here after sideboarding? Let's see what we got. So for uh, for AJ, I think we just have a lot of wish targets and maybe some pyroblasts we'll see coming out. And uh, his opponent has Spell Pierce, but that looks like it's his only card that he can bring in. And he only has two copies. Right, he has no anti-combo cards? No. Wow. Yeah, I mean, without any extra anti-combo cards, that could be rough. What do you think, Ben? I know you've, you've played Storm before, right? Yeah, I so, have. So how do you feel about this matchup in general? Um, well, it's really rough for AJ if James ever sticks a counterbalance. Yes. Uh, does... AJ have anything in his sideboard? He just has Spell Pierce. Or, yeah, he's, he's got Pyroblast. AJ has Pyroblast. His opponent's likely to bring in Spell Pierces. Pyroblast. Uh, he, I, yeah. I Cro mean, he oh, Cross and Grip. He may bring in Echoing Truth. Eric like, Smith. If he. Head Judge sitting there. If he tries to bounce Counterbalance at end of turn with Echoing Truth and forces James to put a two on top, uh, he can probably. Combo off from there if there's a two on top, as long as he ad nauseum instead of burning wishes. Right. So he may be boarding Empire Blast and Echoing Truth. I mean, he also has Chris and Grip and a Wipeway in his sideboard, uh, which he could potentially bring in. And those are both pretty good answers to a counterbalance. Oh, okay. I didn't see those. Yeah. yeah. I, I, mean, I, I didn't catch actually, them either. I thought they were just one of but. I, I kind of like his chances with Grip and Wipeaway and Pyroblast. Yeah. Um, this doesn't seem as bad as. I would normally expect Storm vs. Counterbalance to be. He's got a decent sideboard for him. 
Oh. <laughs> this uh, is wonderful. Oh, so he went 3-0 in the Legacy Challenge yesterday after missing the first round. Uh, this is a, this is very cool. It's great to see a, great to see a young player involved in a game like this. Without the JSS, I've been seeing less and less of uh, these younger players recently. But it's, so it's cool to see one playing at this tournament and doing so well. Apparently, some people on Twitter have told us that he's like a big in the target circuit. That a bunch of people over there know him and he's rising through the ranks quite quickly. So who knows? We may see him uh, go into a pro tour or sometime sooner. Maybe even in the top eight of the Star City Games Open tournament here in. Uh, that's in New Jersey. For, for those of you just joining us, I'm Gavin Verhey here with Jacob Van Lunen and uh, guest commentator Ben Hayes. And we're watching the match between James on the right, who's playing a counterbalance band deck with natural order, and Andrew, AJ Kerrigan on the left. Um, don't, don't call him a small child, because even though that's what he is, he will <laughs> smash you. He's... We well, watched him play the Storm deck masterfully in the first game. He knew exactly what to do at every junction. Apparently, uh, he's been playing in the target circle, and people know him from that area. And I wouldn't be surprised if uh, he has the ability to be the next big thing. Apparently, he plays a lot. He's a, yeah, he apparently talks a lot of smack too when he plays. It's, uh, it's what's being said on Twitter right now. It's, uh, I don't know, I think it's pretty cool. So, uh, so yeah, Ben, you fell to, a, to a, quick, a quick couple losses here, but it's great to have you in the booth. I haven't really seen a lot of you this weekend. How did uh, yesterday go for you? Uh, yesterday went all right. I started off pretty well and uh, lost the last... Lost some rounds near the end, end up 7-3. Uh, 7-3. Uh, uh, Jerry, AJ and I, and Drew were all playing uh, Sparkblade for okay. Angry Birds. Okay, you all played the same list? Yeah, okay. with, uh, with one Vala, which was really good. Um, yeah, I think the deck's still very good. Um, ben Lundquist was playing a Callblade version with Black right, History, yeah. and that's actually something we've been testing. Although I wasn't quite comfortable enough with the list to play it this week, I may be playing it at the next open. Yeah, we talked. It has to, a lot of potential. Yeah, we talked to Jerry, and he said, "I think this is the next evolution of the Cobblade deck." He was like, "Creeping Tarpet, especially, was a card he was a big, big fan of." Yeah, that was the biggest. That, we felt that was the biggest advantage from adding black was yeah. uh, Creeping Tarpet and Inquisition. Is great. eating candy. <laughs> <laughs> He's adorable. Can't yeah, eat. Wash it down with some iced tea. Yeah, you think he's adorable until he smashes you. <laughs> he, he appeared to be talking between games. I wonder if he was rubbing it in a little. Maybe James was thinking he should have countered the silence. Maybe not. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it'd be interesting to see if maybe we can get him in the booth. But I'd love to hear his perspective on the game. Uh, so uh, James still uh, shuffling pretty heavily there. And uh, AJ cuts it. And let's see if those cards are any better for uh, James there. Got a force of will, a tropical force island. I thought I saw a dryad arbor. I'm missing that too. I mean, I haven't caught a glimpse of Andrew's hand yet. I wonder how fast it is. Okay, I think that's a dark ritual. AJ is um, playing uh, with the same sleeves that uh, Godanus is a big fan of. Mm -hmm. Bacon sleeves. <laughs> uh, Pro on so many levels. Yeah. Those are, uh, <laughs> those are Legion's games, correct? Put those out. Yeah, those guys doing good work. Uh, Alright, so James leads on Noble Hierarch. And down comes GTA on turn two. That's a decent start, but GTA obviously isn't that awesome unless he goes for the Empty the Warrens plan. Yeah, I'm interested uh, no, about GTA here. No, uh, like, uh, why that's still in the deck? Well, it's what, what you know. The way that uh, AJ played the first game could James think he's on Belcher? 
Did he cast anything? Cast oh, he, 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 he has silence. He played, Never mind. He played multiple lands too. Yeah, yeah and he, he and he played the silence. Yeah, yeah. I know you're right. You're right. Um, killing mm -hmm. the killing the life gain or the, the life gain could definitely be relevant. It may also be that he just had oh, just had dead cards. Right. I mean, yeah, that, I mean that's what it looks like. Really, only has two cards to bring in. So I mean. Yeah, and I mean, it just, it just presents a larger clock. You know, you just bash for an extra four every turn. James gives Andrew the okay on a ponder. And uh, AJ ponders. Carefully. Ponders his options. And he chooses the shuffle. This is so much fun watching him play. I'm like, ever. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even say anything. It, it, it is pretty spectacular. It, it's just a joy. Does anybody know how old he is on the Twitter feed? Uh, at some at Pandora line, Thomas line, Twitter, casually drinking his iced tea and swinging for 12 like a prodigy. There you go. All right, so... Uh, such mastery. It's a. Uh, it's great. Uh, it looks like one. It's hard to say for sure. The the glare on those sleeves is kind of weird. Also, he's he's holding them kind of close to the chest. So it's hard to get a glimmer of what he has. But I think I I think I did see an LED. I thought I saw a dark red too, but I wasn't totally sure. This right hand there. He's, he's counting up storm count. Doing math. All right. That's not an easy deck to play. Yeah, no, I, uh, I play Popper online sometimes, and when I first got into it, I was talking to some people, like, friends who are on the Pro Tour, and I was like, well, what's the best deck in Popper? And at the time, it was Storm, and they were like, Storm, but, you know, nobody can play Storm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that's, like, not an uncommon consensus for Storm, so yeah. it's really impressive that not only is he playing, but he's also playing one of the more complicated decks. Yeah. Um, and in 3-0 yesterday and 2-0 today, you have to assume he... You know, is playing it well. Maybe an easy deck to play sloppily and get some wins, but um, you get a lot more mileage if you play yeah. it well. Oh, it's really hard to play well. I played it uh, at the uh, Star City Games Open Series in uh, Seattle last year, and there are so many things you have to know with this deck to play it correctly. I mean, he doesn't have Doomsday, which I guess makes it a little easier, but still, there are all kinds of small interactions you have to know with this archetype. Yeah, I can... Uh vouch firsthand that Doomsday is not an easy deck to play. Oh, yeah, yeah, she is. Uh, Doomsday may be the hardest deck to play of all time. Like, memorizing all those piles. And... Today was the first time I'd played with the card, and, you know, I've been playing Magic for a million years, and uh, it was by far the hardest deck I've ever played. Wow. Yeah. Like, much more difficult than Dredge, much more difficult than Storm. It's interesting that we're watching this match with Ben Hayes, because, Ben Hayes, this was you at neutral ground. That was me at neutral ground. <laughs> probably probably exactly that age, you know. Yeah. Um, although I was not playing Storm. I was playing mono green and mono red decks against Tolarian Academy. <laughs> uh, so you were on basically the opposite uh, side of the spectrum here. Yeah. <laughs> this kid was beating me, with, and James is playing green creatures. I was James. <laughs> yeah, sounds about right. He uh, shuffles and presents his deck back. James takes a chance to cut. Oh, he's, did we mention he's 13? Uh, so, yeah, so we just got word that AJ is 13 currently. Oh, um, he apparently he'll is... He'll uh, be a junior in college when he's 17. Yeah, so apparently he's already, like, a junior in high school, so he's very yeah. advanced intellectually. That's really cool. I, uh, I always approve of those kind of programs. <laughs> I, uh, I started college early and it was a huge help to me and I can feel, uh, I know exactly what that's like. So you can use the Doogie Hauser pickup line and everything. <laughs> uh, AJ uh, carefully deciding which cards he wants to put back here. Untaps, draws one of them. Do you think he has it this turn? 
Uh, James doesn't have a lot going on over there. All right, so there's Chromox. We know James has a force, right? Do we know if he has a blue card? Uh, well, Andrew apparently is fearless. That's so, why. <laughs> uh, so uh, Andrew goes for the silence. Looks like he has a force. And, is that a brainstorm, maybe? No, it doesn't look like it. Yes, I mean, he's not going to do anything about this. It doesn't look like there is anything to do. Or is that, that's not progenitus in the middle, is it? Well, I mean, even if he has a force here, like, he just forces the silence and just creates a right. storm, right? Right, I mean, the, the silence just has to resolve. Has, I think one's a plow. I think he has force plow with some card we can't see. Alright, so he does end up forcing, pitching Warmunk. But he only has one card left, so all he can bluff is days, right? Yeah. And I think, I think AJ is probably happy taking the extra storm. Let's see. Uh, let's see what AJ decides Storm's to do here. At three right now. Mox, silence, and yeah. force. Yeah. Storm's at three. Storm count three, and I think here comes Dark Ritual. Yep, Dark Ritual. That's black, black, black. And Storm count four. And Dark Ritual again. Storm count five. Five black and mana pool. Yep. He has three or four cards left. Three cards left. Storm counts at six now. Storm counts six. With five black still in his mana pool. Storm so, counts at seven. Yep, seven with five black. His opponent's at 18, which... His opponent can go up to 22, right? There are two counters on the GTA. Uh, so if he's tendrilsing, it has to be for 11. Correct. This, this kid is this kid is very good at this deck. He goes down to so three black. Is he responding to his own infernal tutor? I don't know if he needs to. Yeah, I mean, just to create the mana, right? Well, uh, but if he's just going to get Unless Tendrils of Agony, or maybe, or is, do you think he's going to get Ill-Gotten Gains? Does he have it? Yeah, he does have an Ill-Gotten Gain. That's why I'm confused that he didn't. Well, you, you can just crack the Lion's Eye Diamond in response to the Ill-Gotten Gains. And if he's, he doesn't have a mana. Oh, no, he does, because the ritual left over. Right. He still has three, so he only needs to tap the line. Okay. Right. And then he still has the mana to pay for days. Uh, <laughs> Which he's uh, playing around, Well, right? the problem with Ill-Gotten Gains is that James will get a force back, right? Oh, but wait, does he have a blue card anywhere? No, he Not uses blue card to warm up. blue cards are fg Yeah. So, unless the last card in his hand is a blue card. It's a swords, isn't it? I think we confirm it's a swords. I, although, why would swords be in his deck? I guess to instant speed gain some life? I'm not sure. I was confused about that, but... <laughs> Alright, so he cracks the Lotus Petal. Pays one. Oh, he goes for Ad Nauseam. Seems like a reasonable play. Now is he cracking LED? I, I mean, now you have to crack LED, right? Okay, so he chooses to not crack LED. Oh, no. Isn't he out of mana? Okay, wait, hold on. on. Wait, what? I mean, is he maybe keeping the LED in case he hits Infernal Tutor and mana? Well, he has no mana floating, right? Maybe. Has he played a land yet? No, he has not played a land. He hasn't played a land. So he could play a land so or ritual. Is he keeping LED so that he can empty his hand after he casts the Infernal Tutor? Wow, that could be really next level. I mean, that might, might be the right play. It's the only thing I can think of. Because and I mean, if he's if he's gotten this far, I don't think he would have just forgotten the sack that right. in response I, to I agree. the Tutor and the Ad Nauseam. I think I agree. he has a plan. Yeah, I, I agree. I also think he has a plan. I feel like, like he realized that his Storm Count wasn't going to be high enough, so he has to go for Tendrils a different way, and this is the best way to do it. Build up more Storm. Uh, crack LED with Infernal Tutor on the stack. Yeah, and if he goes for Ill-Gotten Gains and the last card in James' hands is a, hand is a blue card, then he's just right. then he just loses on the spot. Right. So this may be just safer. Yeah, and this way, I mean, he still has plenty of mana. He can play a land, he can play Lotus Petal. Now he has tons of mana, Lotus Petal. And he's got tons of Storm. Um, he so, has a Brainstorm, but did we see any other way? Did he, did he get a Burning Wish? I think we saw a Burning Wish. Pile? And yeah, and now look at this. It's just like the classic Are You Dead face. He's just laying everything out. James. James is just packing it in. And there's a hand clapping over there. I feel like 
I feel like the finals just finished and it's only round three. Hey, will you take a will you take a picture with me? <laughs> you should. Uh, right. I really want to know if he was yeah. holding the LED sack. I, I want to get him. In the booth. Um, we're getting him. Yeah, we should get him over here.